Well, everybody, you have joined the First Place for Health webinar. We're finding freedom in our sneakers. This is a go get, you know, we're a freedom year this year. We're just going to be be free. That's a, one of our themes for this year. And so that is uh, our freedom is a good place to be. And so we have Mary Ward here with us. And so I would just like to pray for us and get us started. So just a quick prayer, uh, lift the Lord. Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for technology that allows us to connect with people all over this country, Lord, the world even, Lord, and we are thankful for that. I ask that you help each of us know something from you. Let us hear, sense, uh, have a prompting of a next right move for us. Um, we're talking about moving today. So Lord, help us. Where, where are we going to move next, Lord Jesus? I pray for our speaker, Mary, and I pray for all the listeners right here that are with us right now and those of you that are listening to us on the recording. Thank you and blessings to everyone. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise your name in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, let me introduce you to Mary Ward. Um, just some logistics. You all, we cannot see you or hear you. The only way you can communicate with us is to send us a message in the chat, which look at how wonderful all of you guys are. You are from all over, thank you. And, um, but you can also ask us a question uh, in the Q&A. So there's a little chat bubble. If you're on a phone, know that the chat bubble might be under participants or some other place uh, on your thing. You might have to look for your chat bubble. Um, but you can send us a message through chat. You can send it to everyone or just panelists, whatever you want. But we have a lot of people here. We have, um, we're just so excited. Looks like we're going to hit our hundred. So way to go. So now, Mary Ward. Um, I have known Mary. I am a body and soul instructor for three or four years now. It's hard to imagine how, praise the Lord. And um, I met Mary, I guess, just through doing First Place for Health events and her being on there all the time and just just love her to death and, and so thankful for the passion she has. And so, of course, she. I just, um, I don't know, she loves exercise. She also loves a boot camp, which we now call Fit360, which is another passion of ours. So we both have similar passions of just helping to keep people moving. Isn't that what we all need? We all need to get moving. So Mary, as it turns out, has been teaching fitness classes for most of her adult life. Yay. Way to go, Mary. She's a certified group fitness instructor through American Council of Exercise. We all call it ACE. And she's an ACE facility faculty member leading uh, various continuing education classes for fitness professionals, which means she teaches classes to us fitness instructors. She also teaches a uh, boot camp, which is called Fit360, Power Strength, Cardio Strength, Gold, Dance Blast classes, all with body and soul fitness. She's also certified with Refit Revolution. Mary is also the marketing director for Body and Soul, as well as she leads the Northern Virginia as their area director. Now, that's just not all she does. She also uh, is the CEO of Integrity Enterprise Solutions, which provide professional services to the federal government. And then finally, she is one of our honored board members on First Place for Health. And so she gives us a lot of stuff. And also add that in our new materials that's coming out in the fall, she wrote our fitness stuff. So she's one of the authors of um, our materials that are coming. But anyway, without further ado, I'll stop talking so that you can meet Mary. Well, hi everybody, I am so excited. This is my very first webinar ever, and I'm really excited to be with you. Not only am I on the board for First Place for Health, but I'm actually a, a member of a First Place group. I hold myself accountable. I send my weight in every week, and I send my tracker in every week, and I do my Bible study, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it, and I can't wait for the next session it starts, it, our class actually starts tomorrow, so I'm really excited, or actually Wednesday. So I'm really excited about Be Free and um, the study. It just looks like it's going to be a fabulous study, so I'm excited about being, being able to participate in that one. But I'm thrilled to be able to be here with you and just share, hopefully, to lighten the load uh, or lighten the idea of exercise and kind of turn that around a little bit for you and 
and help you come up with a way that you can be free in it, that you're not weighted down by it, but that you find freedom in doing something fun that keeps you active. So um, one of the verses, uh, one of the, actually, Helen, if you want to go ahead and put up the first slide. Sure. This one? Yep. So one of my favorite television shows is Fixer Upper. And one of the reasons I love it is because they take something that has not had a lot of attention and they turn it into something that is beautiful and fixed up. It's transformed. And I love that. And I, I like that show because so much of it really does apply to us. If we feel like a fixer upper, we don't have to stay that way. We can do things. We can bring in the experts. We can, um, we can start to build a new foundation and, and do some repairs and do some things that transform us into finding freedom in, um, in life. And so that's why I love that show. Um, Proverbs 24.3 says, By wisdom a house is built. And through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. And I think that's a step-by-step -step process. So we have to find wisdom. So you find wisdom, you find wisdom and you build that foundation. And then you, through understanding, start to build and establish that house. And then through knowledge, you start to fill the rooms with beautiful, rare and beautiful treasures. And I think about that in terms of our body. We start with our body, and as we build it through understanding, we start to build and strengthen the muscles and the bones and all the things that are inside the body. And it becomes that wonderful, um, fearfully and wonderfully made body that God intended. And so I love that, and I think that that verse actually can apply to our actual physical bodies. So um, if you want to show the slide about obesity. So I wanted to show you a slide. It always just fascinates people to see where we were as a nation in 1990. This is the state of the nation in 1990 in terms of obesity levels. If you can see, almost every state in there was at 10% or well, actually 15%, 15 or less. 15 to 19% is Mississippi and all other states are 10 to 15% or less of people in the United States in the year of 1990 were obese. So going forward today, adult obesity is over 20% in all states, 30% in 25 states, and 35% sta in four states. We've jumped leaps um, into obesity. And I think the next uh, slide actually can tell us why. This, this map shows the percent of adults who are physically inactive. And I, thought, I think that that's one of the biggest reasons why we are in the state that we are as a nation. 80% of American adults do not meet the government's national physical activity recommendations for aerobic and muscle strengthening. And obesity and being sedentary are two of the biggest drivers of preventable chronic diseases and healthcare costs in the United States. In fact, they say that obesity or being sedentary is the new smoking. So whereas smoking um, used to be one of the number one risks of death, being sedentary has now surpassed smoking as one of the number one reasons for death. So I believe that with the right mindset, looking for every opportunity, you can be victorious and gain energy and endurance by tailoring it to your individual needs and staying consistent, you'll experience transformation. Our bodies were made to be active. Well, Mary, I was thinking maybe now would be a good time to do the poll and see how does everybody feel about exercise? You know, I think that's great. This would be how you feel. So you guys are going to get a poll up on your thing. And so I'm launching it right now. And so you just pick which one it is that you like. So there you go. 
So it goes couch potato, thinking about moving, ready and have the gear to prove it, moderately active but still not loving it, in the groove and enjoying the benefits, and then finally, I can't imagine a day without fitness. So it looks like about 50% of the people are trying to decide what to pick. Be honest now, this is just a feeling thing. Um, uh, this is really, I, I did this based on how, you know, how we change. This is really where a lot of us are. I know I stayed in the ready and have the gear to prove it for a long time. I can't even tell you how many years I paid for a gym membership. I never went to the gym, not once. Eek! I have to say, that was definitely me at one point in time. So um, not anymore, but that's where I am. All right. So how are, looks like we're about 85% of the people have uh, chimed in and let's see uh, there you go so on your on your poll there you go looks like it we're going all right I'm gonna leave it up for two more seconds for anybody else that wants to done all right and I'm ending it and I'm gonna share the results so you all can see so looks like 2% honest people said cat's potato 17% uh, are thinking about moving uh, 15% are ready and have the gear to prove it. 26% uh, are moderately active but still not loving it. And then another 27%, this is the winning one, in the groove and enjoying the benefits. And then 12% of, of the people are, I can't imagine a day without fitness. So yeah, a little bit of everybody, which is cool. That's really great. So we got to get everybody to move at least one level up, except for those people that can't imagine having a day. So. Looking good, everybody. Thanks for participating. Back to you, Mary. That's great. So the first thing I want to talk about is mindset. Um, the definition of mindset is the established set of attitudes held by somebody. And you just proved you, with, that each one of us has a certain mindset when it comes to fitness. So how did you see fitness modeled in your childhood? I mean, that thinking, just thinking about that. For me, I can tell you that I didn't see fitness modeled in my childhood. My mom was a stay at home. Well, my mom was not a stay at home mom. My mom was a teacher. My parents divorced when I was nine. And so she was a single mom of four and she was on her feet all the days, all day long. So when she came home, she didn't want to exercise and exercise back then wasn't the, what it is today. And it wasn't as promoted as it is today because back then I walked to school. I walked home from school. I played at recess. We had two recesses and we had a lunch recess. So we were active quite often throughout the day. And then when I came home from school, I was active outside. I played outside in the, you know, in the street with, with neighbors and um, we just kind of stayed active. So it wasn't exercise, you know, per se, wasn't nat naturally a part of our life. And I'm still to this day one of the only ones in my family that on a consistent basis exercises. And um, my dad was had a whole had was born with a congenital heart disease. So exercise was not a thing for him either. Um, it was always taxing on his body to exercise. Although he challenged himself and he always pushed past the limits the doctors always set around him. So maybe I don't know, maybe I take after him. But um, it wasn't really modeled in my childhood. When I grew up, when I was in high school, I was a cheerleader and I discovered that when I would cheerlead, I went to a small Christian high school and when I would cheerlead, um, we only had one sport, okay? So that's how small my school was. We only had one sport and it was basketball. And I didn't play it, I was just a cheerleader. And so, but I noticed that whenever I would get involved in cheerleading, I would lose 10 pounds and then cheerlead, the season would be over and I would gain 10 pounds. And then the next year I would cheerlead and I would lose 10 pounds and then I would gain 10 pounds. And it was just a cycle, but I started to see a pattern. If the more active I was, the more my weight would stay in control. And um, so what did you see modeled in your childhood? I would just, I would just think about that and, um, and just kind of go back and do some thinking about what it was. Did you, were, did you, were you involved in sports a lot? Was there a specific something that was fun for you? Um, did you ride bikes? Did you roller skate? What did you do to stay active when you were a kid? Um, there was a 
a little old lady that was leaving the church one day and she shook the pastor's hand and she said, I loved your sermon, pastor. Everything you said applied to somebody I know. And that's kind of the way we are. We know all this stuff, but we don't apply it to ourselves. It's great for everybody else, but we don't apply it for ourselves. So I think that the biggest mindset, or I think uh, the biggest factor when it comes to success or failure in fitness is mindset. The act of getting strong doesn't start in the gym, it starts in our head. And you can't change the body in three days, but you can change the mind. So when it comes to mindset, research shows that people usually fall into two categories. They, uh, they have a fixed mindset. They think that what you were born with is what you've got for life and it can't be improved upon or a growth mindset. What you were born with can grow, develop, and be approved upon. So which one are you? Do you have a fixed mindset? You've got what it is, you've got the genetics and there's nothing you can do about it, or there is something I can do about it. Do you have a growth mindset or a fixed mindset? And that's really important to know because if you have a fixed mindset, you might wanna to start to challenge yourself to see can I develop? Can I grow? Can I change? And move yourself into that growth mindset because that growth mindset is where we're going to see success. In, um, in her book, The Wellness Journey of a Lifetime, um, some of you might know author Vicki Heath, uh, National Director for First Place for Health, often said, or says that we often take a backward approach to change. We change our behavior in hopes that it will change our thinking and eventually our mindset. But she challenges us to reverse the order, change the mindset, which will change our thinking and will change our behavior. Once your mind is switched in the direction, switched on in the direction of health, doing the consistent behaviors for health gets much easier. Hmm. So what is your mindset and does it need to change? One of the things that I have found that helps people change their mindset is to find a why. Why do you want to exercise? Do you want to do it because the doctors told you to? Do you want to do it because you have a wedding coming up or uh, you want to look good for a family reunion or a high school reunion? Or do you have a short-term goal or do you have a long-term goal? And for me, I had to decide, I had to find my why as well. And my why is because I have a history of heart disease in my family. My mom died of, um, she had type two diabetes and congestive heart failure. And I watched those two diseases take her from us. And I want to do everything I can to live as long as I can and do as much for God as I can in this body that he has given me. And one of the things that I saw was that she, because she didn't have an attitude of exercise, it was. She, well, she had an attitude of exercise. She didn't want to do it. And that directly contributed to her health. And so if there's anything that I can do for me to contribute to my health and make things in my life, uh, to extend my life, I want to do that. And so that's my why. But everybody's got to find your why. If it's a short-term goal, like a wedding or a class reunion, those things are great but they're not gonna sustain you long-term. So I would challenge you to think a little bit longer than that. So ask the question, why do I want to look good for the, in the, at the wedding? Why is it important that you wanna look good at the wedding? Why is it important that you wanna look good at the class reunion? Was there something in your past that you, want, you don't want people to see you the way you are? Was there something said to you in high school? Is there something that's that is an emotional reason that's below the surface of, I just want to look good at the reunion or I want to look good at the, at the wedding. So challenge yourself with the question, why? Keep drilling down, drilling down with that why until you find an emotional response or maybe a family response like I did in terms of my, um, my own family's health. So find a why. Next, we're going to look at opportunity. So opportunities are all around us, especially in fitness today, and natural opportunities are there every, are everywhere. 
it doesn't have to be hard. It just, you just need to be active. And I think that's one of the mindsets we need to change is that when we think of exercise, we think it's got to be hard and it doesn't have to be, it just needs to be active. So is there something that you like to do? Is there something that you, um, I'm trying to think, I know some friends of mine, I'll talk about some friends of mine. Um, a friend of mine, she, she's a speaker and she likes to go around and she takes her rollerblades with her everywhere she goes. Her goal is to rollerblade in all 50 states. So she has her rollerblades with her and she just looks for opportunity. I have another friend who's lost um, over 60 pounds and she travels a lot as well. So when she's in the airport, she walks the airport when she's delayed. She's got time at the airport, so she just walks the airport. She looks for opportunity to be active. Um, I know Helen and Vince, and they are living in Hawaii now, and they have a lot of they have a lot more opportunity to be active because the weather permits it more in Hawaii. So I always see pictures of them hiking or biking or um, doing something fun outside in the water, maybe paddle boarding. I have another friend who lives on a boat. And so the way she gets her mail is to paddle board to the mailbox or to kayak to the mailbox. Um, I have another friend whose passion is prayer. And so she's decided to take her prayer out on a walk. And so she prayer walks and she feeds both passions. She wants to be healthy and she has a passion for prayer. So she puts them together and then it's not something that's a drudgery. It's something that she looks forward to. So is there something that you enjoy that, um, that, that might get you going, that might get you active? Think about that and look for opportunity. You know, for much of our history of the world, being physically active was part of our life. Um, we had to work. We had to work the fields. We had to, do, we had to walk places. Now we can sit in front of our computer <laughs> and do webinars, which is great, but... We're, we've become a much more sedentary society. Um, we didn't have modern conveniences, conveniences such as washing machines and microwaves, cars, planes, computers. And so we have this DVD that can, uh, you know, if you're at home, you could pop it in and help you get moving. I think, yeah. Helen, is that the strength and flexibility one? Yeah, this is the strength and flexibility one. So I just wanted to show people that, in fact, um, on our website, if you look on our website, hopefully it will work. Yeah, here we go. Ah. All right, here we go. Hold on, I'm zooming. Sorry guys, technological challenges, here we go. On our website, you can see under accessories, we have uh, the uh, Strength and Flexibility DVD that is available. For $19.99, this is the one I start with. We also have, I'm going to go back to that one. We have this cardio one that's all cardio, uh, music, our music, uh, and dance to the cardio. And it's on sale for $10. And then we also, if you want to up your power strength, we have the power strength. This is actually a body and soul one that uh, we purchase and sell for body and soul. And it's uh, $24.99. And then finally, just a little sales thing right here. If you wanted to go to our, there is a bundle here somewhere. Where's the bundle? There's a fitness bundle. Uh oh. Somewhere there's a fitness bundle. All right, I guess I lost the fitness bundle. Sorry. We're on accessories, right? Hmm. All right, we have a fitness bundle here that has a, a band, the DVD. Here it is. Found it. Got it. So it has a band, it has a DVD. And it has a, a exercise pouch for your stuff and a towel and a visor. So, and it is $29.95. So quite a good deal. So if you're interested. So what we've done, so uh, what we've done is we've traded time for, for convenience and we've become much less active and our health has become the victim. It's literally killing us. Physical inactivity is responsible for one in 10 deaths today. And again, I said 80% of adults don't meet the recommended guidelines for physical activity. 60% are not sufficiently active to achieve even health benefits. And that's up from 15% last year. And then sedentary adults pay $1,500 more per year in healthcare costs than active adults. 
And that's significant to, uh, with today's, um, with the way healthcare is right now, to add $1,500 per year in healthcare costs just because you're not active. That's significant. There's been an increase of eight, by, of 83% since 1950 in sedentary jobs, and that's directly related to where we are as a nation. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Um, one of the things that I thought we could do is a poll just to get a, a feel on how, how many minutes does everybody exercise? Uh, so I'm going to launch another poll. It's just a, a minutes of exercise, and so here you go. And the choices are 0 to 30. Uh, in a week, uh, 31 to 60, uh, 61 to 120, uh, 120 to 150. So I was trying to think like that would be basically 30 minutes five times a week or so. Um, 151 to 225 works out to be 45 minutes every day. And then um, if you're more than 225 minutes, way to go, you're exercising. And when I'm teaching body and soul classes, that's really not that hard since Usually I'm doing two or three classes a week that are, you know, an hour long, but all different kinds. I like to bike, even on my day off. We biked today. <laughs> so in the middle of the day for me. So, I'm jealous. I you had the weather so too. I'm sorry. Uh, we we oh, also dear. videoed with our son and he said it was like one degree outside in Pittsburgh. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's too cold. And lots of snow too on the ground. I hear it snowing in Pittsburgh. So no <laughs> bike riding. All right, looks like, come on, guys, hurry up and vote. You've been voting for a minute. Anybody else want to vote? All right, I'm going to close it in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, here we go. Here are the results, and I'm sharing them with you. So 20% are 0 to 30. We got 9%, 31 to 60. Uh, 61 to 120 minutes, we got 16 people. The winner is 121 to 150 minutes, 28%. And then we have people doing 151 to 225, and 200, and we got 9% doing more than 225 minutes. So way to go, everybody. Wow, that's great. A cool. little bit of everything, which is awesome. Yeah. So we're going to move on to victory. So one of the things, one of the goals in creating your uh, fitness plan is to be, you're, you want the goal to make you victorious. You want to succeed. You want to take that first step that makes you succeed. So saying, I'm going to run a triathlon or I'm going to participate in a triathlon, if you've been sedentary, may not be a realistic goal if, you, if you've been sedentary. It might be a better goal to say, I want to participate in a 1K or a 5K. Um, because that's more doable and you don't want to do it next week. You want to give yourself time to train and build to success. So you want to pick something that's easy to do so that you build positive momentum. A single feeling of success inspires effort, energy, and action. And ask yourself if you're confident that the task can be completed. If it can't, then make it a smaller task. Your goal is to achieve success for each day. And then when you participate in that, uh, that action, note the effect the action has on your physical and mental self. Building success momentum creates more enthusiasm for making additional positive changes. So as you see success and victory in one step, it builds on the next step and on the next step and on the next step, rather than setting such huge goal that you don't ever feel like you can complete it. Well, we have a question. Somebody asked, what about training for a half marathon, walking it, you know, not running it, walking it? Oh, you know what? Setting a goal for training for a half marathon is great, especially walking it. There is, that's, a, that's a great goal, but you want to give yourself time to achieve that. So if you've been really sedentary, setting that goal for maybe a year from now, would be more realistic than setting it for six months. You want to I would say start, start with a five. Wouldn't you? I would start with a five k first. That would be. Yeah, my I would still. I would. Yeah. I would start with a five k. <laughs> yeah, I would start with a five k, and that will then build you on to the next one. But if you set that goal out for far enough, you'll probably use a five k as your training ground. So you might get a few five k's in there before you do a half marathon. You know, well, one of our. One of our virtual leaders, she did, she did a 5K every month. That was her goal. Kind of like a first place for health thing. She 
actually did it like donation. She kind of like got people to donate money for her. She's like, I'm going to do a 5k every month to, to raise money when we were raising money for our relaunch. So, oh, that's that, great. so she did one a month. So that yeah. was to keep her going. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. That's a great way to do it. Um, because a single action that leaves you feeling better mentally or physically generates hope. And big changes come from small changes plus time. So you have to give yourself that time to see those changes happening and developing inside your body. So I think a half marathon is a great goal, but if you've never done one before, maybe that 5K is the better goal and maybe 5K a month, like Helen was saying. Well, I'll, I just wanted to double back and say, guys, we've been with Mary Ward and we have, we're working on Move It uh, for our freedom. So she's gone over Move, uh, you know, um, our mindset and O was opportunity and V for victorious. So I um, just wanted to just say we're, all, you know, halfway done and just wanted to follow up. So what's next, Mary? Okay, so we're gonna go into energy and endurance because when you move or when you change your mindset and you create your opportunity and you have those victories, you're gonna gain more energy and endurance to achieve even more. So the, I wanted to just share with you what the government standards are because not everybody knows what the government standards are for physical activity. So this is what the government standard is. And I think we have a, um, yeah, for cardio, for substantial health benefits, and that's what we're going for. We wanna see a change in our health. We want to see benefit. So moderate intensity, that's brisk walking. That is defined as brisk walking. Um, all the government standard is, is 150 minutes a week, which is two hours and 30 minutes, or 30 minutes each day for five days a week of brisk walking. Because we wanna get that heart, the heart's a muscle, and we wanna get that heart moving. So doing something cardio aerobic 30 minutes a day through five days a week is the government standard. Now that 30 minutes doesn't have to be all done at one time. That can be broken up. So you could do 10 minutes, what, you know, at one part of the day and do another 10 minutes and then do another 10 minutes. Um, the, if you decide you want to take it for those that have been, already been doing, maybe you're in those top categories where you've done more than 225 minutes of exercise, um, maybe you wanna choose the vigorous intensity and the government standards for that is 75 minutes a week. That's one hour and 15 minutes each week. So that's something like jogging or swimming laps. Now not everybody can jog and one of the things that I love to do is Tabata where it's, a, it's an interval training method where you, uh, walk for 20 seconds and run for 10 seconds. Walk for 20 seconds, run for 10 seconds, or you switch it around. And maybe you run for 20 seconds and walk for 10. And you can see as you increase and you gain, you build that success momentum, you can flip it around. So, or you can make them longer intervals. You could do 30 seconds and 10 seconds. I know when I, um, I was never a runner, but I decided I was gonna learn to run. And so the way I did it was I went out and I started to walk and I used a walking as my warm up. And then I would run from a mailbox to a mailbox and then walk to the next mailbox and then run to the next mailbox. And I just alternated those. Um, then I started changing the intervals a little bit and I would run for 30 seconds and walk for a minute, run for 30 seconds, walk for a minute. And then I started running for a minute and walking for a minute, running for a minute and walking for a minute. So you can see I was building success as I was doing that. You can do that. Uh, you can't, I wouldn't advise you to go running in a mall, but if you were at a mall and maybe you wanted to go shop for 10 minutes and then take a nice brisk lap around the mall. You know, it's winter time right now and where I am in the East Coast, we've got snow and really cold temperatures, which is why my fire's on. Um, so, you know, walking in the mall is a great way to go and get exercise in a safe area. There's lots of malls have walk, um, walk groups, um, walk teams, and they, um, they have challenges in the mornings. Usually they open up the malls pretty early for you to go in and walk the mall, and they'll tell you how many laps around the mall is a mile, and they'll work with you on that. So there's usually always somebody in the mall to do that specific thing. So that's a great way to get some exercise in, especially in the winter time, if you don't wanna uh, 
participate in a gym, you know, with a gym. Um, but vigorous intensity, then there's strength training. And I think probably more than anything, strength training is the one thing that people just don't do. And actually right now the government is do, are doing some studies that show that strength training might be even more beneficial. So, um, because it's not something that we do, but I just wanted to show you. So you want to lift weights or use resistance bands two or more days a week, but you might not have weights, but maybe you have some water bottles at home and the water bottles are enough to start with. So you just start with, uh, sorry about that. You just start with lifting your water bottles. And eventually you'll, you, you actually will uh, build success with weights very quickly. So you'll move from water bottles maybe to some lighter, some heavier weights. And then these are bicep curls. Um, so you'll just add on and you'll build and the strength comes pretty quickly. You'll start to achieve success very quickly with strength training. So if I were to tell you to do something right away, I'd probably tell you to buy that strength and flexibility DVD because it's going to show you how you can do strength training and you can do it in a chair or you can do it standing. The both options are on that DVD. So that's where I would tell you to start because most of us do some form of cardio. Now there's other ways you can get your cardio in. You know, a lot of times we tell you to walk, you know, to park further in the, the parking lot and walk into the, you know, to give you a longer way to walk. Um, for my husband, he decided he was going to um, not use the restroom on the floor that he was on. He was going to, every time he had to go to the restroom, he was going to climb the stairs down, not use the elevator. He was going to go down the stairs to the bathroom on the bottom floor of his building and then climb the stairs back. To, so that he could get more activity in his day because what he found was he was only moving he thought he was moving 10,000 steps a day when in reality when we tested him with a pedometer he was only getting 2,500 steps in a day on average so he, he knew he's got to put more steps in his day how does he do it he can easily just climb the stairs up and down and add those steps in for himself well one of the things I wanted to share for those of you guys that need to be energized, is this weekend at Sandy Cove, uh, Body and Soul and First Place for Health are pairing up, and we're leading Faith, Fun and, uh, Fun and Fitness for Life at Sandy Cove. And that is a sub, uh, an hour and a half north of Baltimore. And some people that are coming actually got flights on Southwest for $150. So just FYI, um, it's even something flyable. Uh, you would fly into BWI or Philadelphia. But I just wanted to, if you're interested and you're available this weekend, or you can drive, you're within five hours of Baltimore. When I lived in Pittsburgh, I used to drive over to Sandy Cove all the time. But um, it starts on Friday night and it ends at lunchtime on Sunday. And uh, it is, uh, there is going to be a whole bunch of people there. It's going to be awesome. So consider joining them. And you know, one of the things that I love about both Body and Soul and First Place for Health is that they don't push God out of it. In fact, they pull God into it. They say, God, you are a part of this. You have to be a part of this. You made us and we want you to be a part of it. And so when you go to this event, you will not be judged. You will not be compared. You will be given grace. You will be loved. You will be hugged on and you will find people there that will encourage you and support you. You will be prayed for. And you will just walk away having had a great weekend and being encouraged. So I, I hope you go. I hope you can go. Um, if you live close to Sandy Cove, it's easy. It's an easy drive. So hopefully you can make it. And Vicki Heath just posted, y'all need to come, she said. So she'll be there. So, uh, you know, there's Lisa Lewis will be there. We have Amy Stafford and Terry Moscatelli and Liz Burbano from Body and Soul. Uh, so there's going to be, and a whole bunch of people are, are sharing their success stories. It's going to be a great time. And it's, it's, it's teaching and exercise all weekend and the pool will be open and it's fun. So just come, uh, Vicki said she's bringing four people from out of Stowe. So, and Joanne Farber just said she'll be there. So, all right, we got people coming. So join us. It's a big party. It's really fun there. It's awesome. All That's right. Great. What's next? Okay.
Okay, so with the physical, you know, the benefits are that you're going you're gonna to see weight loss and weight control. You're going to see increased muscle strength and muscle mass. You're going to see increased metabolism because when you strengthen your muscles and you build that mass, it's going to increase your metabolism. You're going to see increased energy, improved flexibility and movement. It's going to lower some, it lowers the risk of some types of cancer, including breast, colon, uterine lining, and prostate. Reduces your risk of diabetes type 2 and metabolic syndrome. It improves your immune system. It increase, increases the good cholesterol, lowers your risk of heart attack and stroke, which is really important to me, and it decreases my risk of osteoporosis and your risk of osteoporosis. And those, those are just some of the physical benefits. I mean, I could go on. There's probably more than 40 or 50 physical benefits. Then there's mental benefits, and that's what's great, too. Um, it enhances the ability to handle daily stress and tension. And who doesn't have stress and tension in today's world? So exercise really does allow you to handle that stress better. It increases the levels of serotonin and dopamine in your brain, which is linked with improved mood. It increases the endorphins or the feel-good chemicals in the body, which again improves mood and energy. It decreases symptoms of PMS and depression in women. It reduces anxiety and panic attacks. It improves better thinking, learning, and judgment in middle age and beyond. Who doesn't want that? It increases your enthusiasm for life. It leads to a higher quality sex life. Who doesn't want that? And it is, it's associated with higher self-esteem and better body image. So, you know, exercise doesn't just have physical benefit. It has mental benefits. And it helps you sleep better. So there's so many reasons to do it. Why not? do it. Um, I agree. I'm listening to all those amazing benefits and wondering why did it take me so long to get moving? But <laughs> I have to say I do I sleep so much better. It's it, sleeping is good. So yeah. yeah. And, and okay, so that's the word move. And now we're going to go into it and move it. Okay, what are we moving? You're moving your body. One size does not fit all. One size fits one, and that's you. And so that's where it's an individual thing. And you've got to find out for you um, what it is that works for you. You know, our bodies are made of 206 bones, 608 muscles, 800 nerves, and 1,000 miles of blood vessels, and 80 to 10, 100 trillion cells. We've got ligaments and muscles and joints and sinews that help us bend and move. Our bodies were made to be active. So what do you enjoy? What do you like to do? Do you have limitations? Do you need to bring in the experts like Chip and Joanna? They bring in experts to help them. They have guys that come in and do specialty work for them. So do you need to find somebody to, to, to help you do some specialty work? Do you have limitations? A friend of mine, She's an adaptive fitness um, expert, and she shared a video the other day on uh, Facebook of two young, guy, young um, people, a guy and a girl, and they were both in their mid-20s, and they both were quadriplegic, or not quadriplegic, they were um, paralyzed from the waist down, and they were doing battle ropes. They, in, sitting in their um, wheelchairs, they were doing battle ropes. There's no excuse for no, not moving today unless you're quadriplegic. And even then, quadriplegics have people that help them keep their muscles active so that they don't atrophy. And so there's really, we've, I've got another friend who's got two prosthetic legs and she's becoming a fitness instructor. There's really no reason to say, I can't do something today because we've got too many experts out there that can help you do something. So look for something. If you, Body and Soul has, just in Body and Soul alone, we've got two programs. One that's a seated, a seated program where you do everything in a chair. We do jumping jacks. Uh, we, do, um, we do uppercuts. We punch. We, um, we move in the chair. It's called gold. And then we have longevity fitness, and that's a little bit lighter movement, um, but standing. Uh, then we've got Fit 360 with a little more hardcore boot camp style workout and power strength, which is a, a real, um, a, a much more, uh, a higher level strength training. Although even in that we show modifications in everything we do. So we want you to be, have, find success in whatever you do. 
so whether it's power strength, whether it's Fit360, we will show you a modification. If you walk into one of those classes, you don't feel like you, you shouldn't ever feel like you have to walk in and compete with a person who's been doing it for six months to a year. You start right where you're at and you move to the next level. That's what it's all about. So even in our dance blast classes or our cardio classes, the same thing is true. You come in and you work at your level. I modify, I show modifications all the time in my class. I'm happy to because my goal is to get you moving and help you find success in what you enjoy doing. So you've got to find what you like to do and then get out there and do it. I just took my 12-year-old my niece roller skating. I haven't been roller skating in a long time, but I remembered as I put on the skate how much fun it was. And I got out there and I wasn't great at first, but I started to remember and my muscle memory came back and I'm like, oh yeah, I can skate backwards. I can do this. I can't cross my foot over yet, but I had fun out and I burned some calories skating out there with her. So find what you like to do because everything you, it, when you enjoy it, it'll lead to success. Mary, yeah. I think we were going to ask everybody just on your chat and what we need you to do is click it. Instead of saying, um, and panelists, we want you to say all attendees. And we thought everybody could just type in, what's the last thing you did for exercise? Just the very last thing. The last time you exercised, what was it? Everybody type it in. But this time, instead of saying all panelists, check all panelists and attendees. So get type in, everybody. Wake up. It's time for you to do something. All right. So we got all time together. 90 Yoga, hiking, I love it. Water aerobics, went to the gym, stationary bike. I saw ice skating, Leslie Sansone. They're walking at home inside. Yeah. Walked in the woods. Shoveled snow. <laughs> Snowmobiling. That sounds like fun. That sounds like so much fun. Mini okay. trampoline. I love that. Somebody went birding. That's awesome. Kickboxing. Walked in the mall. There, they, there's a lot of ideas here. Awesome. But, you know, and that's great. You know what? A friend of mine likes to, is an artist and she likes to paint. So I, you know, encouraged her to go out and take pictures of things that she might want to paint. Get out, start walking, go on a photography hike and take pictures of things that she'll want to come back and paint. It's a great way to get active. It is. Somebody danced. Just wanted to add a few more things. I saw dancing on here. And then um, several different DVD things on here. So a lot of, a lot wow. of great things. Walking while crocheting. I love it. I love to crochet. So I've never tried it walking. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah. So, all, all right. right. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt, but let's go. No, back. no, that's great. I love to see all of these things. They're um, playing in the snow with the puppy. Oh, that's great. Um, one of the things that extroverts you, you've got to find whether or not you're a group fitness person or a solo person. Do you like to exercise alone or do you like to exercise with a group? I'm an extrovert and I like to exercise with a group, but um, I have a friend who's an introvert and she does not like to exercise in a group. She likes to exercise alone. She just finds her, it's a little bit more empowering for her to be alone. She recharges that way and I recharge when I'm with people. So if you're in a group fitness class and you're an introvert, or you don't like to be in a group fitness class, you might not find success. So I would not encourage you to go into a group fitness class. Do something different. Maybe find just one buddy to go walking with or find one person to go and do something with. Um, Mary, we only have eight minutes left, so. Okay, so the last thing, oh yeah. So find your, so Helen, can you put up a, the, the next sure. slide? We're sure. gonna go through pretty quickly. So this is the rate of perceived exertion chart. And, and uh, what I wanted to tell you about this, and we're going to send this out to you so you have this, this chart. Really where you want to be working is between that five and six zone. If you're just walking um, briskly, you should be between five, actually between five and seven is where you should be. If you're doing a P90X or a level like that, you're gonna be in the eight, nine, 10 range. Now 10 is gonna be your maximum, but P90X is doing more of an interval training, and so you're gonna stay in that, 
you're going to stay in those upper numbers, eight, nine, 10. When you're doing those interval or high interval trainings, you're going to be up in that eight, nine, 10. But otherwise, generally, you're going to be down in that five, four, five, six, seven, trying to push it up to five, trying to push it up to six. Um, so that's what you want to be on this chart. And if you go to the next one, um, and this, this shows you, so recovery zone, that's, uh, you're working 60 to 70%. That's a basic cardio kind of steady state aerobic zone, 70 to 80%. Maybe you're a little bit higher. So maybe walking on a treadmill, you're 60 to 70%, but in a Zumba class or a dance blast class, you're uh, 70 to 80%. And if you're doing a fit 360 class or a P90X, you're in that 80 to 90%. And this Carvonin formula is going to help you determine what your individual heart maximum heart rate ranges are for you. And we're going to send this out to you as well so that you can um, figure this out for yourself. And there's Carvonin formula calculators. You don't have to take this. You don't have to do the math. You can just Google Carvonin formula and you put plug in your numbers and it'll figure it out for you. But what the biggest part of this, the Carvonin formula is you need to know your resting heart rate. And you do that simply by, before you get out of bed in the morning, just find your pulse on your neck and count a minute or count 10 seconds and multiply by six. And that's your resting heart rate. You don't wanna get out of bed before you do it. You wanna just lay in bed and do it then. And that's your resting heart rate and you're gonna plug that in. And why that matters is because my husband has low blood pressure and I have normal blood pressure. And so his level of his maximum heart rate, even though we're the same age, is gonna be different than, it is, than mine. And that's important to know so that we're working in our own individual target zones. And when we're working in our own individual target zones, you can go to the next one, Helen. <clears throat> you're gonna see transformation and you're gonna find success. And that's what we want. We want you to find success in doing whatever it is that you, uh, that you can find that success in. So, um, we, you know, God says that um, he is in the process of transformations. And in first place for health, we believe that change in mindset comes when we put God first in our lives. God transforms. And it transforms us from, and he transforms us from the inside out. In the message, Eugene Peterson writes Romans 2 this way. So here's what I want you to do with God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God ha does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Then fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you. and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you and develops a well-formed maturity in you. Hebrews 12, 11 and 12 says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who've been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. It's a process. If you do the work, you will reap the reward. God deserves first place in your life, and you deserve the experience of putting him there. Amen. So, amen. So with, with that, let's take questions. We're, gonna do, we're actually going to do a poll, but this poll is a little different. We thought we would do a poll where you would make a commitment to what is the exercise level you're going to commit to for the next three months. So I'm launching the poll. So maybe you're not doing anything. You were the zero to 30 minutes person. And so pick how many days a week are you going to commit over the next three months? And then Mary is going to pray for us uh, based on the commitments that you're going to make. So this is your action step. Like what, you know, it's one thing to come and listen, but what are you going to do with the information? that you've heard today. Can give everybody some time to put their, their things. So the choices are two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, every day. And I can speak to every day. I have a rest day, but even on my rest day, we like to go have fun. We like to go move. We like to go do something, you know, maybe not as an exercise, but something fun. Um, I do live in Hawaii, so I do get to go to the beach or something. But still, um, when we were in Pittsburgh, you guys know, um, we used to do crazy stuff. 
So uh, we love to do, we like, you know, it's fun for my husband and I to go do something fun. Even if you go geocaching, go find something new. Oh my gosh, that's so much fun. We love doing that. Yeah. So we would just, that was some fun. All right. So it looks like uh, about 84% of you guys have uh, done it. So I am going to share the poll just so you can see where you fit in on what you committed to. So we have 4% going for two days. Way to go. Two days. Nice. Three days, we have 26%. That is great. Four days, 13%. We have 36%. That's the winning going for five days a week, which is awesome. And 18% is 16 days and 3% is every day. And I want to re uh, emphasize what Mary said. This is an individual thing. It's whatever your goal is. Don't worry about comparing to other people. It's what your commitment is and what God wants you, what next step God wants you to do. So, and I would encourage you to go back to your member resources as well and look through some of those because in that, in your member resources, we have how to start, um, biking, how to start hiking, how to start, a, you know, things that you'll need to go to swim class, to, to, to do a lot of different activities. We give you, um, the, we talk about the specific carbonum formula, fit formula. There's all kinds of things in there. There are all kinds of tools in there. There's even a walking challenge. You can, you can log the miles that you've walked per week. Um, so go back to your member resources and check those out as well. We do, and that's awesome, Mary. Well, we're out of time. Uh, we don't have any questions that came in. I think people were pretty uh, active anyway. So would you pray for us, Mary? I sure will. Father, we thank you that you've given us bodies that move and that you want them to move, and you, you say you live within us. And so, Father, I pray that we would honor our bodies by taking the best possible care of them because it's your place, it's your house, and Father, I pray for um, everybody that's been on this webinar. I pray that as they move into a new level of fitness, I pray that you would help them to find success. I pray that you would give them wisdom to move into the right next step, whatever that might be for them. I pray that you would bring people into their path that can help them and encourage them along the way. I pray that they would not feel judgment or condemnation, that they would feel success and strength and confidence in moving forward in this phase of their life. Lord, I pray that you would wrap your arms of love, of love around each one of us. Father, help us to sleep well tonight. Um, but I pray that we would wake up tomorrow refreshed and ready to go and committed to our goal of movement, whatever we've committed to here tonight, that we would commit to that and make it happen. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this incredible body that you've given us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.